Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabari here, and I'm doing yet another movie review this week, which is also a Wes Craven film that happens to be another favorite of mine. And not only that, but it's going to be released this week by Shell Factory's label, Screen Factory, on Blu-ray and DVD, as part of their collector's edition, which is called Shocker. It's a movie about a serial killer and a TV repairman who wants up going on a killing spree until he's being sentenced on a death penalty into the electric chair where he wants up becoming pure electricity by processing all their bodies just to make a killing. It stars Michael Murphy, Peter Berg, Mitch Pileggi from The X-Files, Cammie Cooper, Sam Scober, Richard Brooks, Ted Raimi, with special cameo appearances by Wes Craven himself, along with his daughter, his son, Jessica and Jonathan Craven, Dr. Timothy Leary, you know, with John Test, and all the rest, even Heather Langenkamp, and it's written and directed by Wes Craven. The movie begins set in the suburban town of Los Angeles, California, leads a serial killer and a television repairman named Horace Plinker, who's played by Mitch Pileggi, who wants to becoming the prime suspect when we focus on the investigating detective, Lieutenant Don Parker, who's played by Michael Murphy, who gets too close with him, because he's the one responsible for murdering his wife, his foster daughter, and his foster son. But his other foster son, Jonathan, who's played by Peter Berg, had developed a strange connection to Plinker all the way through his nightmares and leads to Parker to Plinker's rundown shop in a shootout which several officers are killed and Plinker managed to escape. But he only targets Jonathan's girlfriend, Allison, who's played by Camille Cooper, in a retribution. It also leads to another dream which Lieutenant Parker and the police to Plinker who is in the midst of kidnapping, only this time he was about to kill Jonathan as he was arrested and was quickly convicted by sentencing himself to die in an electric chair. Yep, which that means with the power of electricity all the way through a TV set, you know, he's going to become as we speak pure electricity you know during his um, execution we also then learned that uh, Plinker was actually Jonathan's uh, real-life son you know and not to mention that he actually shot him in the knee while trying to stop the murder of his mother so that means he actually made a deal with the devil and not only was he already uh, executed by becoming pure electricity he wants up possessing many bodies to come so that means whenever he meets uh, another person in general he'll be able to use that body just to attack Jonathan and continues his murderous rays against others he did soon possesses Lieutenant Don Parker which he uses his strength to fight off Plinker he escapes into the TV dish while Jonathan and his friends are trying to wait to fight him. But then Jonathan, with the aid of Allison's spirit, devises a scheme to bring Pinker back into the real world and accidentally discovers that Plinker, with all of the energy sources that he has, is bound by the law of the real world and using it as a limitation to defeat him. So then, of course, Plinker wants up getting trapped inside a television which he threatens Jonathan that he will find a way to break out of, out of the prison. So. And yes, that, that was the scene where, you know, he wants to be baiting inside. He, he started seeing a lot of various uh, music videos, TV shows, and everything. <laughs> but you get to see, <laughs> you know, Plinker and Jonathan fighting with each other. Yeah, I, I definitely remember that scene. Yeah, they, they even have some music by... Uh, you know, Mega Def and Alice Cooper and all, all the rest in the mix. So anyway, when, once they try to escape, 
That's when he hears Allison's voice to tell Jonathan to take good care of himself. While his entire neighborhood was suffering a blackout. While Plinker is already trapped inside the television. So every so that means everybody just wants to, you know, looking at the beautiful stars up in the sky. <laughs> yeah, something you never thought you'd see. <laughs> I, I really did enjoy this movie. You know, it, it was a pure favorite of mine. I mean, I, I really enjoyed The Killer, you know, Horace Plinkers, you know, played by Mitch Pileggi. Hard to believe because um, I remember he got his start in the movie Three O'Clock High, you know, who played Duke Herman. He played the school security guard uh, that was going to go after Jerry Mitchell, only to find out that, that he had the switchblade that you know, that his best friend had planned inside his locker that he actually found inside his car with, with the note. You know, that, uh, that Buddy Ravel had placed it on. Yeah. I remember that movie, of course, so 3 O'Clock High. That was another favorite um, back in 1987. But hard to believe because before he went on to do the TV show The X-Files, yeah, he did play a, a crazy uh, serial killer. And... And the fact that he actually used the electricity and all this other stuff that he wants to. And also possessing other people's bodies just to go after Jonathan and all the rest. You know, continuing his his murderous rays like he always does. Yeah. Uh, I, I always remember that moment that he ever he started using the television set by, by unleashing the power of energy. <laughs> just to finally make a killing. <laughs> yeah, unleashing the power through a television set. It works. Um, had a lot of great special effects too. Um, uh, everything from the electric lightning that they used to to all the um, the spirits of of Jonathan's girlfriend Allison. Yeah, definitely the real heroine there. And also. Uh, Peter Berg, you know, did a great job playing the son, and you know, I, you know, he knew that he was going to be the hero once he went after him. And it's, it's, uh, and Michael Murphy did a great job um, playing the Lieutenant Don Parker, you know, who is, of course, his foster father. You know, trying to go after him for what he did. But I gotta say. <laughs> I, I really did enjoy the way they, they did this movie and and it was great to see some cameo appearances, you know, by Wes Craven himself, you know, playing the neighbor, you know, along with uh, his family and you got to see a lot of great scenes that they went into. Yeah. But the movie did have its problems. I, I admit it, you know, there are a few scenes that seem to go out of nowhere, but otherwise it's fine. Uh, another scene I never forget was when he actually invaded inside uh, a friend of his that actually wants to uh, breaking down the door just when he was about to go after until suddenly uh, you know, Allison's spirit wants up showing up just trying to stop him. Yeah, that, that was another moment of mine that I remembered. And another moment was when, as I mentioned already, you know, where Jonathan and Plinker were actually going inside the television set and actually going to a lot of <laughs> once they started channel surfing they, they started going to channel after channel you know, everything from you know, music videos to, to TV shows and talk shows and all that other stuff <laughs> it's like wow I mean that that's probably one of the funniest moments I've ever saw in the movie it's it was fun I, I, I really enjoyed this movie um, I just can't wait to see this on Blu-ray if, if I ever get a chance. But nevertheless, you know, check this movie out. Now, I know this movie had a 7% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, it didn't get any good reviews. Uh, other than the fact that Gene Siskel recommended it, surprisingly enough. Because so, I guess he was the only one that, or may, probably one of the other few critics out there that that actually uh, gave a crap for this film and I'm surprised because you know I actually really love this one I just didn't understand the hate that this this movie got onto 
Yeah, same thing with the uh, Deadly Friend. You know, both of these films that Wes Craven did, you know, got some hate from critics. And surprisingly enough, they were actually going to make a sequel to this. But unfortunately, the movie flopped before they even had a chance. Yeah, so that's a shame. And of course, he also had trouble trying to uh, cut all the violent scenes in order to avoid the X rating. Yeah. So on and so forth. I mean, mostly because they started showing some scenes involving, you know, the Plinker actually, you know, actually biting off the prison guard's uh, fingers off and and all these uh, graphic electrocutions that they show of Plinker becoming as we speak. A lot of graphic stuff that they went into from its production value. But unfortunately, uh, they haven't released an uncut version of this. So, I wish they did. Well, I don't know. Maybe we'll, we'll take our chances. But with that aside, I enjoy this movie. It definitely needs to be watched. And uh, now I love the music that's done by Alice Cooper and Mega Def. It definitely works very well, too. Uh, very well shot. You know, it, it definitely has the feel of it. So, yeah. Just check it out. So anyway, I give Shocker four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.